If you've ever been around propane tanks, you'll know that once in a while you'll walk past one and you'll get a little whiff and you're like, smells like an expensive problem and a lot of times it is. So what you're gonna need to track down a leak on one of these propane tanks is fairly simple. You're gonna need just some bubble solution that's gonna allow you to basically soap the fittings we like to call it and you'll also probably need some wrenches most likely if you're able to just kind of tweak a spot and fix the leak. Let's go ahead and I'll show you guys where the leak is on this one. I found it already, but I'll show you the process of how you go about that. The product we're using is called Big Blue. I'll link to this in the description if I can. Otherwise, I'll link to one very, very similar. But just having some of this on hand for checking for leaks, both for refrigerant leaks or gas leaks or even air hose leaks for your air compressor, this stuff is extremely useful to have a little bit around. The nice thing about this is it has a dauber built into it. So this is what we would call a dauber. And if you just pull on it, it actually extends out so you can reach further um, around fittings and things like that. So all we did is we went around and checked all of the different fittings and basically any spot where there's threads or a connection being made, you're going to want to check it. Ultimately, this right here is the spot that I found. It's actually pretty bad. It's a really bad leak. You can see how fast these bubbles are, are growing. Let me get you a close up. So right here is where the leak is. You can see just by putting that little bit of soap on there, it just keeps bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. In fact, I think you might be able to even hear this leak. When you can hear the leak, you know it's bad and you know it's probably been expensive. I'll take off my microphone and bring it over here. Tell me if you guys can hear this. Can you hear that slight hissing sound there? Yeah, that's the sound of money going into the atmosphere. You can see right here on my gauge, we're at like 375 gallons now, and I know that we were probably at closer to 450, so um, yeah, that's not really good at all. If you do not own your tank personally, then you absolutely need to contact the people that do own it. So whoever you're leasing the tank from, contact them if you suspect that there's a leak. You know, probably finding the leak is okay using that bubble leak detector, but don't attempt to fix anything until you at least have permission from the company that owns the tank. Another thing that you need to be aware of is there's two different ways of fixing a leak. The first one is you take the fitting apart, re-pipe dope and thread tape it, and then put it back together again. And I'll link in the description to a video that I made about how to pipe dope and thread tape a fitting in such a way that you shouldn't have any issues. I'll also link to the different pipe dope and thread tape that I would recommend for fixing gas fittings uh, in the description. You can actually get by with mostly just pipe dope. PTFE thread sealant is what I think it's called on the, on the bottle itself. But that's the first way. You take it apart, reseal it, put it back together again. The, the second way that you sometimes have to do is what we're going to do here in a minute on this fitting that's leaking. That is to just tighten up the fitting just a little bit in hopes that the existing thread sealant will just tighten in that fitting in those threads and cause the leak to stop. So those are the two uh, ways that you can fix a leak on any sort of a system that has pressure in it. The one that we don't have as an option on a bunch of these fittings on a propane tank is the taking it apart and putting it back together. Because if you thread this out of the tank, you'll get what my brother Ruben calls a blevy, a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion, possibly. So you do not want to thread one of these out because you're releasing everything inside of the tank is going to go out very, very quickly. It all happens quickly. So do not attempt to take any of the fittings that are threaded directly into the tank out. So this fitting, this fitting, and this fitting, we could not take out without the tank being empty. Uh, so we could possibly have the option of tweaking one of these a little bit. So if there was a little bit of a leak on the threads right here on this gauge, in theory, we could attempt to just tighten it up a tiny little bit. With anything that's beyond this valve up here, we could actually take this apart and fix it. Uh, if there were a fitting that were relying on thread sealant. So the, this, this fitting right here and that fitting back there, 
those don't rely on thread sealant. They're more of a flare style fitting. Uh, so those actually wouldn't be applicable. This fitting right here, however, does use thread sealant. So if we were to close off the valve that feeds this regulator, we could pull this out, repipe dope it, and put it back in and everything would be good to go. You'll see in just a second when we fix the leak, I actually don't double wrench the connection. And that's because it's basically coming directly off of the tank. The tank is very substantial and sturdy. So if you needed to tighten the fitting like this, there's no reason to add a second wrench to reinforce anything. But if you're gonna be tightening a connection that is on something that's loose or something that's smaller, you definitely want to double wrench it. And what double wrenching is, is basically having two wrenches that face the opposite direction. And we're just gonna size these up to this fitting here. And if I wanted to tighten this onto this, you would use two wrenches just like I'm holding them here to be able to hold everything in place while you tighten the fitting. So just keep that in mind if you do have a leak in a spot where you need to double wrench it, definitely do so. I'll link to these wrenches in the description of this video. If you guys are looking for the best of the best, Nipex cannot be beat on the quality of their wrenches. So this is the large adjustable pliers that we have here. I think this is a 12 inch. This is a very substantial wrench. If I had to choose two wrenches and two wrenches only, it would be two of these. However, the close runner-up, uh, this is very versatile as well, but obviously you can only grab onto things that have flat surfaces with this, whereas this one you can grab onto just like a round piece of pipe. But this is the Nipex pliers wrench, and these have really come into significant popularity recently and really do a fantastic job. It's incredible how the harder you push on the fitting, the more it tightens the jaws at the same time. So you really don't run into the situation where you're rounding over uh, the flat surfaces on the fittings nearly as much. So I'll link to these in the description. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic. So that covers the notes that I wanted to make about the tank itself. Uh, briefly, let's talk about where your gas line comes up into your building. So right over here, we have our gas line coming out of the ground and into the regulator. All of this stuff is much more serviceable than the tank itself because we can shut off the gas going to this regulator and if we needed to we could disassemble these fittings and repipe dope them and tighten them back into position. And the same goes for inside the building. Obviously finding a leak inside the building is much more uh, crucial than if you have one outside. Uh, if you ever have a situation where you have a gas appliance that's been disconnected, make sure that there is a plug in that line. You never want to rely on a valve not being turned on to keep your house from exploding. So if you ever disconnect something, immediately get a plug to seal off that line so that it can't be accidentally turned on and uh, cause your house to turn into a bunch of little uh, toothpicks. So right up here is the place where that uh, explosion occurred. Uh, let's go ahead and fix this leak. We're going to attempt it anyway. I will point out one other spot that's a common spot for it to leak though, and that is on the handle of the valve that actually feeds your building. Right now you can see I've got nothing attached to this tank, so uh, you can't see the pipe coming off of here. But I did check all of this for leaks as well. But right here where the valve stem comes through, uh, sometimes it'll leak around here. And what you can do is you can take and tighten just a tiny bit. You can tighten what we call the packing nut. This is the packing nut around here. So sometimes you can just give it a little bit of a, uh, nudge and that will uh, tighten up the nut around the stem on the valve for your tank. All right, let's see what we can do for this particular spot right here. I'm just going to see if I can give it a little bit of a turn. Hopefully, it'll make the difference. Oh my goodness, I think that did it. Just that little bit of a turn. We'll quit right there. Let's take some more of our bubbles here. I 
It's still leaking out of this cap here a little bit, but this, uh, this cap right here is able to pretty much seal that off. Sometimes you can just kind of uh, gently tap those, that relief in there. You hear it pop like that? That's because we're popping the seal. There's definitely a little bit of a leak still over here. You can see how the bubbles are still accumulating a little bit. I'll try to snug that up a little bit more yet. That's still leaking a little bit in there, but I don't think there's anything we can really do about that. So this cap right here is gonna have to do the trick for keeping that sealed off. Either way though, let's uh, call that a day. I think that uh, this is going to solve the majority of the leak. If you found this to be helpful, I'd appreciate it if you do me a quick favor, hit that thumbs up button, which will help more people find this video, and then subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more content like this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of videos here on the screen for you to choose from. Fun fact, this uh, connection, this first connection off of the tank where the valve is, is left-handed threads. Not backwards threads, but left-handed threads. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna show you guys how to twin two propane tanks together. There's another one right over there. So if you make sure you turn on notifications, you should get notified when that video goes live. See you next time. Hi guys. I'm using your propane tank as a prop. I hope that's okay. Perfect. <laughs> we're here in Northern Minnesota visiting grandma and grandpa. So we're getting some work done at the same time. So got to use grandpa's uh, propane tank as a prop. What have you guys been up to? Going on a ride, Grandpa. What were you guys doing? You guys got the heaters out of the trees.